That would be me. Look who we're hanging with. Ryan O'Halloran. Jason David Frank. Humberto Ramos. Please do not change channel. Welcome back. Thanks for logging on and tuning in. If you haven't already, hit that like button and subscribe. That way you can keep coming back over and over to hang with us and our fantastic creative guests in the arts and entertainment world. I'm Allison Murray, and right now we are at the gorgeous train station in Utica, New York. And we are uh, here for HeroCon 2, hosted by the Utica Children's Museum and James Thomas Manson and Jessica Bickford Manson. And we're hanging with sketch artist Matt Flint. Thank you so much for hanging with us. Thanks for having me on. So, um, tell us about your um, sketch and your drawings and your art. So, uh, I mean, I do I do a lot of different kinds of art. I do uh, I do sketch art. I can sketch any kind of character you want, whether it be a video game character, um, comic character, or your own character in different you know mediums. Pencil. I can ink it. I can color it with Copic markers. I can even do digital artwork. So. Oh wow! Cool. Um, so how do you do your work, and where do you get your inspirations from? How do I do my work? Yeah, well, you kind of just explained. Yeah, I mean, kind of. <laughs> I mean, you always start out with a basic, you know, pencil sketch, and if you want to go beyond that, you lay out uh, your pencil inks, um, and, and th I mean, that's how I do it. There's other people that do it other ways. Uh, you could also then, you know, finish it off with colors. A lot of times, like with my traditional artwork, I even like to finish it off with a little bit of white gel pen for highlights. Ooh, uh, nice. Digital, same way. I could either, I could, you know, lay out the pencils. I could scan that in and uh, just go straight to color from there, like more like digital painting. Or I, I could ink it, scan in the lines, have nice crisp lines, uh, color from there, or do all the inking digital now. So. Oh, I know. Inspiration. Um, yeah. I grew up in a small town. Uh, we didn't. We had comic books, but then we didn't. Um, we had anime, but not like access to, like you would in like a big city. Up until I got like satellite TV. So my inspiration came from comic books, toys, video games, anime, like it, everything kind of like coming from left field all into one. So. Um, I would say definitely comics were a big con contributor to that, especially like during the 90s and stuff like that. Right, so. right. Um, what's your favorite artwork that you've done? <clears throat> oh, that, that, that is tough. Um, every time I do a piece of artwork, I try to push myself to the next level. So I'll, I'll sit there and I'll look at that and I'll be like, that is... That, you know that is my best work. Uh, like I'm, I'm very proud of that. Until I, I, I break it down, I'm like, nah, I can do better. So I'm constantly pushing myself to the next level. Um, one of my most proud pieces, I would say, especially the last couple of years, was uh, was based off from the video game uh, Metroid. Um, and it was it was a redo actually of a one I did the year prior for. Uh, I did it in time for a show called Retro Game Con. And it was uh, half of the the armored suit from Samus, and it broke away um, to reveal like her undersuit. Oh. It, was, it was really cool. But the next year, I, I like learned a lot more, and I'm like, yeah. you know what? I want to redo this and make it better. So I did it like with a more dynamic pose, and like just did like a whole bunch of little pieces. And I hand colored everything, and. To, it, it's very colorful, which a lot of my work can sometimes be really dark. Um, it's really colorful. It's really bright, and it's probably one of the most piece, you know, one of the pieces I'm the most proud of. So oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> now, did you go to school to be an artist? Yes and no. It's a, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's like a, a layered question. Um, I majored in art in high school. But I did go to Alfred State College to do uh, computer animation and oh, design, nice. and that was that was basically at the time it was more of a heavy uh, 3D animation class. But as I as I kind of went got farther in it, I realized that you're behind a monitor clicking a mouse yeah. and you never see the light of day. <laughs> and 
you're, you're constantly just clicking little points and hoping it works. And it, it, it was not for me. I took some wrong turns after that, and then you know, I, I just, I eventually down the road, I decided I want to just become an artist for me. So. Oh, good. Very good. So. Um. So you explained some of the tools that you use. Mm -hmm. um, what do you like the best? Forever pencil will still be my where, where I'm home with. That, that is, there's nothing like a pencil drawing that looks great. So that is that's still where I'm at. Um, but on, on the other spectrum of things, like it, when you do digital and you get to the end piece where you're like doing the highlights and everything's just coming together, that is really satisfying as well. So it. I would I would say what like when I'm coloring digital, when I'm doing uh, just traditional work, pencil is still my favorite. Cool. Um, is there an element of your art um, that you enjoy working with most? Still, still is uh, still is the pencil. The penciling. Uh, but I, over the last couple of years, I've started working with Copic markers uh, for my hand color feel, like especially for like convention sketches and stuff like that. They're alcohol-based markers. They are. They're, what's really fun about that brand in particular is most of their products are refillable. So it's not like something you use and throw away. You can actually buy a refill for it and fill it up. And they they blend too. So like you can go light to dark with different shades of green. It it's awesome. It is. Cool. It is a cool product and a handy tool. They're just very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> you go poor. Yeah. Like with them, so. Yeah. Especially if you don't do much selling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how do you know when a project is done for you personally? It's something that, that you feel like you. You can sit there and you can critique a piece. Like I've spent like eight hours on a piece that probably should have taken me two, but. I'm sitting there, I don't like this, I don't like that, I tweak it, I tweak it until like something, I, I guess it, I would say until it feels balanced. Like, it's, you know, you're looking, you're looking at like your piece of paper and like you just, you have all sorts of stuff until it feels completely balanced and then you know that like this, if I do any more to it, I could probably detract away from it. Right. Um, and that, that's kind of how I do it, especially, especially with digital artwork. Um, traditional, it's, it's a little bit easier because you kind of, like, you know what your tools are limited to, and you know where that end point is going to be, like, where you want to be. Digital, it's kind of hard. Like, I mean, you, you could have that visual, but there's, you could do almost anything with that, so. Are you your own worst enemy and your own worst critiquer? Yes. You know, do you have some, like maybe your wife look at it and say, how do you like this? And she loves it and you're like, no. Yeah, she'll tell me it right. sucks. So. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, that, that's good. I like, I actually like honesty. I have, I have a few artist peers that I would be like, hey, let me know what this is. And they'll come back, they'll rip it apart. And I, and I love it because that like tells me that I'm like, all right, I need to push myself to be better. Right. Um. Because my, my, my thing is, you can you can be the best artist in the world. It, you know, I mean, I, I know art's relative and subjective, you know, that's art is in the eye of the beholder, but if you're not pushing yourself to be right. better yeah. and learn, then you failed as an artist. So, like, you can, like, plateau at a level, but if you're not, like, trying to learn new stuff, then you're, you're failing. So. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Every day's a learning curve. Um, do you have any rituals before you start? Coffee. Coffee. <laughs> I need Man's coffee. Man's best friend. Yep. yep. <laughs> uh, where can people find you and your art? Uh, you can find me at facebook.com slash the art of Matt Flint, Instagram at the art of Matt Flint, Twitter at art of Matt Flint because they don't like the the. <laughs> uh, I just opened a Vero account. I don't know how to li really link that too much. Uh, also, you can find me at the art of Matt Flint on Tumblr as well. Awesome. Fantastic. What's coming up for you after today? You do a lot of cons, right? Yep. Uh, this is actually my first show in into convention season. I have, uh, next weekend I have Heroes and Villains on Portland, New York. Uh, two weeks after that, I'll be in Syracuse, New York at um, Saracon at the Holiday Inn in Liverpool. Uh, free comic book day, I will be at uh, Secret Comics Cave in Oneonta, New York, along with my buddy uh, Chris at Simple Books and uh, artist friend Jim O'Reilly. Oh, yeah, Jim. Yeah. 
Jim. You know Jim? I love him, yeah. Yeah, I love Jim. He's yeah. a great guy. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, then my first big show, a couple weeks after that, will be in Nickel City in Buffalo, New York, May 18th through the 20th. Uh, I'm look, looking forward to that show. I loved that show last year. Uh, also coming up, I'll have, in the summer, I'll have uh, Finger Lakes Comic Con, Salt City Con. I don't know if they do Comic Con now. Salt City Comic Con, it's in Syracuse. And, uh, I'm booked through August uh, with uh, Terrificon out wow. in the Mohegan Sun. So wow. it's, it's, it's busy. Good. Yeah, it's busy. It's going to be fun. Yeah. There are probably going to be some a uh, couple small shows maybe sprinkled in there as well, too. So. Wow. And then I always round out the year with Retro Game Con. Oh. This is probably my most fun con I do. It really? is everything. There's cosplayers, video games, artists. It's it's very relaxed. It's kind of like... It's kinda like the Christmas accounts because you know the year is done. <laughs> okay. <so. laughs> wow. Do we have time for a game? We've got time for a game. We like to play games on this show. They call me the game girl. Okay. We're going to play. I like games. Go bleep yourself. Go bleep myself. <laughs> Do you ever play? Yourself. Uh, maybe. We I don't just, remember. We don't know how to, we don't have time to play the real way, so we just pick a card at random. Okay. We read the little thing and we fill in the bleep. Okay. That's it. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me pick a good one here. All right. You want me to go first? Sure. I swear I only bleep on the weekends. I only sleep on the weekends. <laughs> on a rare occasion. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Ooh, what do you if, mean? If someone has a bleep, run. <laughs> oh no. The, the. If someone has gold body paint and a gold speedo, <laughs> run. Run the other way. <laughs> Okay. Don't put your bleep on me. Don't put your hands on me. <laughs> bleep always works on me. <laughs> Coffee. Ooh, that's <laughs> or, a good or one. Or Jack Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, we've had so much fun hanging with Matt today. I'm Allison Murray, but before we go, we'd like to give a special thank you to our partners at Krypton Radio out of LA, Famous Faces and Funnies, Off the Chain Radio with Yvonne Mason, Space Coast Comics, Asylum Convention Entertainment Services with Heather Reed, and our great friends at Summon Unique Magazine. These are the folks that share our videos all over the World Wide Web, and we hope you will, too. Don't forget to hit that like button, leave a comment, let us know what you think of today's show and our guests. You can also check our guest links below. Remind, remember to subscribe, log on, and stay tuned to see who we're hanging with next. <laughs> awesome, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.